All right, we're live, ready to rock and roll. How's it going, Taicho? It's going awesome. How's it going for you? I am doing pretty swell. Um, do we want to start with a super cheesy intro sequence or like an intro phrase? We can. Do you got one set up? You I totally one have one. I was driving home today and I thought about it and I was like, dude, I'm not even going to talk to him about it beforehand. I'm just going to drop it. But then I asked you about it <laughs> all right you go ready for, for this i'm gonna pretend i didn't hear about okay, it okay so I, I didn't t i didn't say anything this is the first time okay. i'm saying anything about it hey welcome Literally. to press start to play if you want to play please insert some credits and let's get going there we go oh i like that isn't that's that good. so dumb hey, yeah that's where we're in an arcade no it's, i it's know <laughs> dude arcades man i love arcades arcades were great you know all right so we said that we're going to talk about some multiplayer stuff today right yes oh man so, just jumping right in <laughs> <laughs> yeah well it's funny because you know we mentioned arcades and it reminds me so there's actually a like world famous arcade kind of in the area of where i live it's called galloping oh. ghost um oh, awesome. and so i guess there's two locations one's in the city i didn't know they had one in the city so i go to one that's in somewhere i can't remember where it's at <laughs> it's like it's in a place Springs. Thing. yeah so some place <laughs> near chicago um and they actually have this like crazy arcade multiplayer game that i didn't oh, know existed cool. and um did you ever play on real tournament oh yeah <laughs> so oh, yeah. kind of imagine like a really like cheesy really like terribly skinned like unreal tournament okay and it was like literally your own arcade machine and it had the rolling cool. ball for like movement and aiming Whoa. it was really weird it was like just literal left and right and forward and backward and that was it like that's all okay. you can do and wow. uh i never seen it until i went to this arcade and it's so weird because like there's people that are super into it and it's actually pretty fun it's got like oh cool unreal tournament style weapons but it's just so random and huh. i never knew it existed until going to this arcade but it's it's cool that's awesome man yeah we have an arcade kind of by my hometown not anywhere big um <laughs> <laughs> but it's just this cool little arcade and it was the coolest man they have like a lot of like super retro games like they have like a original mario like mario bros or not like mario bros where you're like hitting the turtles and there's like the pal block like i'm talking okay. like side scroller mario bros yeah, okay. yeah so they like have like one of those machines like asteroids donkey kong like just a bunch of like super classic ones and they had oh, one yeah. kind of when you're talking about that it made me think of this just like hey my man coolio I love Coolio. He's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, so I was thinking about like arcade games. that have some like kind of gimmick to it where it's just like it requires you more than like a joystick and a button. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I'm trying to remember the name of this now. Holy crap. I was like, oh, I know what it is. Okay. So it's Time Crisis. Okay. Did you ever play that one? Okay. I know Time Crisis. Okay. So Time Crisis in the arcade, at least the one I'm pretty sure it's everywhere, but at least the one that I am aware of, it has this pedal and then you have like the little plastic gun you shoot at the screen. Okay. And so how okay. it worked is like your character would take cover um, when you had your foot off the pedal. And then when you wanted to pop out and shoot at the bad guys, oh. you would push down the pedal. And so you yeah. were like popping in and out of cover to, oh my gosh, it was seriously the mm -hmm. best. Oh, I, know, I know i can't think of what game it is but i do know what you're talking about i know something about that game for sure oh, oh man best. what game is it they i think they have it at that arcade that i yeah. go to i'm fairly certain they do yeah because it, it sounds so familiar it's it's is it spy hunter is it called spy hunter maybe spy hunter is the one when you're in the car and you have like a bunch of like gadgets and stuff and you're like you do. driving down like the freeway and you're like pull into like the trucks and like upgrade your guns and then you come out and you have like but i rockets. think it was an alternate version i okay. think that's what it was i think it was a spy hunter game that was made and Very you were cool. like possibly i don't know i could be totally <laughs> wrong you're a it liar was that, uh, what was that one sniper game something scope oh i don't know i think i know i couldn't Silent think of the name scope? maybe that's, silent scope? it sounds like a stupid arcade name <laughs> <laughs> yeah that one was intense uh i don't know maybe if it was a version of that one but yeah i don't know i i do know what you're talking about i think this arcade has it yeah oh, that's so cool one thing that killed me about like arcade games that have like the fake guns is there was like 
I remember Alien was always a big example or like kind of like any like the movie tie-in ones there was like transformers or i remember like uh terminator they had like these huge guns and they were like super like they had like a crazy like vibration kickback thing with it yeah it's so, like you'd hear someone play and it's like thuck, 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 thuck. And it's just like the gun vibrating <laughs> in their hand is like the yeah. the noise and it's just like ridiculous and you like play it and you're just like oh sh-. the whole my- shell just rattling with yeah the <laughs> yeah oh my god so it's like uh, the, the paint shakers you know those things you oh, the yeah. paint mixer that just shake automatically for you <laughs> yes oh my gosh exactly it's like oh my gosh like what is this like giant piece of machinery like, it's like gonna like tear off the machine and just like go like right. wild did you ever play borderlands where there's the guns that have like the legs and they like walk around yeah yeah it's, a little bit it would have been I, like I didn't that. Play fully through it but i played I, enough to know that you gotta play borderlands man that's a great one Dude, see, so like that was when I tried to play multiplayer since we're on multiplayer talk here. So I tried to play that one, but people were already too familiar with it and Mm -hmm. I wasn't. So they just kind of did their own thing. And the reason I actually didn't stick with the Borderlands is because I was getting lost. Like Uh, the the style of the art, it's not that I just liked the style of the art. It's just the way that it was for some reason. It just like blended in in a way that I guess like my brain was just having a hard time comprehending. Oh. So I'm like trying to follow the map and like figure out where I'm going. And I'm like, this literally just all looks the same. Like oh. drop offs looked like they were still level with <laughs> oh, like legends. Bummer. So I couldn't tell like what was up and what was down. And yeah. it was super weird so oh. i got lost i got frustrated i was just like ah forget it i'm done <laughs> oh that's unfortunate yeah. i love borderlands i think that's probably one of my more favorite game series and i've actually never played online borderlands i've always played local borderlands and i've only done that like twice and my buddy and i were we always talk about it we're like oh yeah we're gonna finish borderlands too and then we start it and we get to like the first like big area and then something happens and we never finish it and then he's like hey i think we should probably just start over and i'm like yeah not a bad idea i don't even remember what was happening and so we started over and then we get to about the same point and then life and whatever and so it's like oh man him and i are never going to finish borderlands i've beat it multiple times on my own but like co-op i'm never going to be able to (laughs) it's not going to happen i feel you you know it's funny too because co-op wise and like so when it comes to co-op, I was saying that one of the in our last you know little session we had that one of the co-op games I didn't really anticipate to play a lot. What I did was Gears of War. Oh yeah. Um, so I did a bunch of Gears of War like co-op, but funny enough, I never really knew like too many hacks like playing games or you know like glitches or anything. Mm-hmm. But uh, <laughs> Gears of War was one of the few games that I figured out some of the glitches for. So I would oh, do sweet. like this one glitch where you could like roll into this like corner of a wall or like it was like a beam you could roll into or something. Okay. And you'd go under the map and you could shoot up from the bottom and take oh. people out, but they couldn't <laughs> hit you. <laughs> That's not fair at all. <laughs> I know, right? I, you know, I didn't do it too much, but like I had always gotten screwed over by people who knew how to do that in the past. And I oh, was like, it's my ah, turn screw now. It. It's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little fun <laughs> oh man oh, so I, I did that for a little bit i'm a little guilty um yeah oh, I, you know man. i won't get into my there's one other game i did it in but <laughs> it's my favorite online game ever and i don't want to say it yet i'm gonna i'm gonna let us build up a little bit first so, so you don't want to get banned <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i you know i i'm, I'm gonna no because it's not recent it's actually an old game oh, okay that's my favorite yeah so i'm building up to it also coolio asks us how we're doing i'm doing awesome i'm doing awesome Two having fun up. excited to be doing this <laughs> i've been working like crazy lately so um it's been hard to find time to line up to do another show so uh Happy Probably to finally can. have some time and get on here. So uh, it's already going fun. We, we, we've yeah. only been on here for what, like 10 13 minutes? minutes so, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, we're doing good. Yeah. A lot of content I want to talk about. How you doing, Coolio? You got any yeah. multiplayer games you want us to talk about? What What's your all-time favorite multiplayer game ever? Ooh, ever? That, I'm waiting on mine, so I'm curious what Coolio <laughs> is. I don't want to get into mine yet because it's okay. going to be a, a good combo. But oh man, but, yeah, I have such a hard time because like I w- I'm not like a huge online gamer. I think probably the biggest online multiplayer game I play is Soviet Jump Game, and that one's awesome. <laughs> but I say that's probably my favorite uh, like multiplayer game. Probably not, <laughs> okay. but I love it. 
Let's see. What what game is this? Well, Star Wars. Oh, Old okay. Yep. You know, I actually downloaded that recently because I got my PC, and <laughs> um, it seems pretty fun. I didn't do much in it because I again started working a lot, and uh, I was working really hard to finally reach ranked on oh, Overwatch yeah. on PC since I switched over. So uh, finally reached it. But now nobody wants to partner up with me because I'm a level 25. <laughs> so oh, I'm going to get man. stuck in ELO hell again. <laughs> so sad react only send F. But uh, yeah, <laughs> it is what it is. But, love. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm going to be getting back to some more some more Very gaming good. now. I beat Resident Evil 4 again for the first you time in forever it. recently. And uh, it's my first time beating it on PS4. Nice. So that was fun. Have you finally beat Code now. Veronica? Have you done that one yet? Or have you given have, up on uh, that? <laughs> I know. I, you know, I was thinking about going back to it earlier, but I wanted to eat and then we had to do this. <laughs> so I was like, ah, ah it's fine. That's, ah. <laughs> 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 it's good to go for it. Oh, man. Time. Yeah, I never played Star Wars The Old Republic. Um, it was one that I was always aware of. And I was like, oh, that seems cool. But I've never been big into like MMOs as much as I wanted to be. I haven't. Um. World of Warcraft is one I've always stayed away from because I know people just get sucked into it and then they spend the rest of their life playing World of Warcraft. And I'm married and I don't want to lose my wife, so I'm like, okay, probably should avoid certain games so I can make sure my marriage can main tact and so i'm gonna call out my buddy josh who uh <laughs> is always stuck doing freaking raids every time i come by and i'm like hey let's hang out and he's like okay just give me three hours of raid time really quick hold on one, <laughs> one second just three hours oh cool sick sick Great. josh it's thanks bro <laughs> midnight man like that's <laughs> literally not even he usually finishes uh-huh, around like 10 30 and i'm like all right cool well, let's watch like two episodes of something or <laughs> let's play like a round of nhl and i'll head out now that oh, you're done raging for three hours <laughs> and he tells me every time how he hates it so much which is so funny too everybody yeah. that i know that plays world of warcraft they swear how much they hate it and then they're like <laughs> Yeah, I got like 17 raids this week. So oh I my can't gosh. Do like, oh, okay, cool, cool. Yeah. You like check their bank account. It's like Blizzard, $400. Blizzard, $200. Right. You know, just like all these Blizzard charges. And you're like, all right, someone's lying here. <laughs> I swear, I want to like make some accounts and sell them, though. I know people who have made money selling accounts. But then yeah. again, it's a lot of time to dedicate to sell accounts for like $200. So. Oh my gosh. Yeah, seriously. It's crazy. Kind of like the market for things like that of like you do like an online thing and then you can sell it. I don't know like if it's like illegal of some or like in some games. I don't know. I'm sure some it's games they don't care. It's their rules. Like okay. I know what you call it. Like RuneScape has like a, a community for it where you can like sell gold, but you're not supposed to sell the gold. Oh, okay. So like if you get caught, you can get banned, but like your account gets banned and stuff. So gotcha. Well, you don't want that. Because you worked right. hard to get all that gold. Awesome. Yeah, I never play. I was never big. Like, Blizzard has, like, all these, like, big online games. And I never really got into any of them. Like, Overwatch is one I really want to get into. But I don't have it. And I've never been able to, like, I'm sure I could totally get it and jump in. But now, like, Overwatch 2 is coming up. So I'm like, okay, do I just wait for Overwatch 2 and just get that? And so I'm just like, I don't know, man. Are you on PC or are you more on your systems? Um, I'm more a system. Like, my PC is very minor. Just kind of, like... Mm-hmm more i don't want to say older games on the pc but like mid 2000 to 2010 kind of pc games is a lot of what i have on my pc okay. on my steam you know yeah because it's like 15 bucks right now on oh. like blizzard net or whatever battle net oh yeah. Blizzard accounts. yeah so that's why i picked it up again because i was like ah, i already got it on playstation is it worth getting again and then i was like ah for that pc experience for 15 bucks <laughs> yeah I think, think i'll give it a shot so totally i started over i fell crazy in love with it dude it's so different like yeah honestly i tried to go back and play with sk on uh on some like you know overwatch on ps4 mm-hmm. and i was getting messed up dude i couldn't oh, aim man. anymore like trying to go back to the analog stick i was like holy hell <laughs> oh no it's <laughs> so difficult <laughs> Yeah, I've always kind of been, like, pretty good with both. Like, I've managed, like, I'm like, okay, cool, I can handle a joystick or mouse and keyboard. But then, like, you get, like, PC games, and you're like, oh, I could, like, plug a controller into this and, like, play with a joystick. And it's like, but then it's just, like, what's the point of playing it on PC? Especially games that I, like, own on both PC and console. And it's like, then what's the point of playing it on PC if I'm just going to plug a controller into it? So I, I games like that, I'm like, okay, I got to play with the keyboard and mouse because yeah. get a different experience from it for sure. 
I'm like totally vibing on it for shooters for sure. It's just so different. Honestly, mm-hmm. I am having so far, okay. So here's what surprises me. <laughs> okay. So it, it's multiplayer, so we can talk about it. <laughs> it's good. So it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Soviet jump game, man. It's yes. weird because like, dude, I went my first three rounds. I actually didn't end up sending you the third one. I won three in a row, wow. and it was my first three rounds. I came in first place all three times. That's awesome. Um, after that. I was dying on nonsense. Like I would try and jump (laughs) and like, I would miss it like just a little bit and I would fall or like somebody would come out of nowhere and like they would hit me by chance. And like, I would Uh... drop down or like people jumping on me as I was respawning out of like, you know, the, the fall zone, you know, the bubble. So, Oh bro. I was so mad because I got those three (laughs) first place and then it was like 16, 32nd. And I was like, Oh, come on. Like what's going on? so i hopped off but the, <laughs> that's awesome. that game even though i got those three first place and i was getting the second place when your one buddy was playing with us oh yeah i, I have such a harder time doing it on keyboard as compared to like controller yeah that one's an interesting one because yeah i have a hard time on keyboard as well just i don't know why if, i don't know if it's like the game itself just kind of controls weird with a keyboard if it was kind of more designed for uh controllers and stuff like that i would love for them to bring it to the switch if they bring soviet jump into the switch i will be buying that the minute it comes out um because i think that'd be so great on the switch there are other games they've made they made a dating simulator it's like a dad dating similar simulator <laughs> so you're like dads trying to hook up with other dads it's pretty awesome <laughs> wow. i haven't actually played it but it seems just it's kind of a silly concept but they had <laughs> that one come out on steam and then they actually have brought it to they brought it to switch and now i think it's on all consoles now um, but okay. Soviet Jump Game, they haven't done anything with. But I think it actually just got like its full release, like maybe a month or so ago. I mean, Soviet Jump Game has been in early access since like March. Like I remember okay. playing it like day one when it very first came out, and I loved it and played it a bunch. But then it was in early access. They were just like really trying to like add things, you know, move things around, which I thought was awesome. And so like it just barely got its full release like a month ago. So okay. I'm still holding out for some Soviet Jump Game on the Switch, but. I need to see you again, because like uh, I have a thing where I get like these like pixel blurs, and I can't tell if like my oh. computer's processing it right or no. It's supposed to be there. The yep. Is it okay mm-hmm. for sure? Yeah, because yeah. there's stuff it just like straight up just like streaks, and I'm just like, oh, is my <laughs> game broken? Nope. Yeah, it's supposed to do that. So kind of the story behind the game. It's an interesting story because it totally backfired which is unfortunate because i thought it was really funny so the game is produced by this this youtube channel called the game grumps okay so they they're two guys that do let's play videos together and they're hilarious Mm -hmm. i think they're great you should go check them out and um so that there it's like produced by them and like started and run by them but um so they made a video where the main guy aaron he found this old russian nintendo called the dendy and he was like oh yeah i found this old dendy on ebay for whatever and so i thought i'd play some games and so he's like playing these just all these different games and they're just like super terrible russian games like everything's in russian (laughs) and he's just like oh cool this is weird and then he finds this one he's like oh this one doesn't have like any writing like the cartridge is completely blank and he's like let's see what it's all about so he like plugs it in it's like it requires an internet connection he's like oh weird and so he kind of like starts like looking into it and it ends up story for soviet jump game Mm -hmm. so what it actually was is that wasn't actually what happened this is kind of like the setup for it it was just kind of a fun little marketing thing of like whoa we found this old russian game that was like the first battle royale because it was like some soviet propaganda back in the 80s that they made into a game but then it kind of got lost in time and he found it and so it was it was all ended up being fake which was unfortunate because i thought the story was really cool but it was really pissed people off they're like this is false advertising and stuff it was very (laughs) unfortunate because he i mean aaron the guy who started and ran it all he was all like super bummed out because like he wanted to kind of have some fun with it and make it like kind of a joke but like come with this new game and so like people are like is this game even like real like what's and so like soviet jump game kind of had like a very interesting uh start because it just had that backstory to it that people didn't really they didn't like trust it they're just like ah i don't know if this is real or not and then it ended up being not real and so it pissed a lot of people off because they're like you lied to us and so it's a big old mess but i loved soviet jump game from the beginning i think it's great and you should at least check it out if you have not played it Sounds like they no man's guided, huh? Not, no, uh, 
I don't know. No Man's Sky was a weird one because that one was kind of like where he like promised like, oh, yeah, you could do this and this and this and this. And you couldn't yeah. do any of that. I guess that was more of just a story thing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So Soviet Jump Game, they didn't necessarily make any promises they couldn't keep. It was kind of more just like the uh, the story behind it, like where this game came from was just kind of a joke. And so, yeah. That was th that was the thing, and I, I thought it was funny. I thought it was great. I was like, "Oh darn, it wasn't real, but oh well." You know, we got a fun game out of it, so I'm not complaining. Yeah, I think it's a good game. I mean, it's I have fantastic. a blast with it. It's like so simple, but it's challenging enough to where like it it really puts new games into perspective. Like it's so wild. We're in a time of like literally the most intense graphics ever. Yeah, and yet some of the biggest games out there are indie games that have these just like. I don't know. Like, I don't want to say half-assed because it's not half-assed, but just yeah. old-school graphics, you know? Like, it's mm -hmm. not up to par graphics, I guess is the way to put it. But yet these yeah. games still just shred. Like, they just kill it. So it doesn't really matter how fancy your game looks. It, it, there's yeah. so many games proving, and Soviet Jump Game is definitely one of those. Like, it's a blast of an online experience. It's a way oh, to yeah. play multiplayer and a battle royale, but not take, like, 30 minutes and... I don't know. It's an interesting new concept for sure. Totally. Yeah. And, and I think one thing that is so awesome about it is its simplicity. I mean, when you first get into it, it's like super intimidating. You're like, oh, whoa, what's going on? But it's like everyone's played Mario and it plays exactly like Mario. I mean, so many of the items are exactly the same as Mario. I mean, you have like the duck hats, the exact same thing as the Tanuki suit from Mario 3. And so it's like, okay, everyone's played Mario 3. You got the feather and you did the floaty jump thing, you know? And so it's like, it's just familiar stuff that you've seen and played before. And so I thought it was great that they took something familiar and did something very cool with it and made it really yeah. accessible for everyone. Um, I mean, certainly there is like a kind of difficulty spike at the beginning, kind of trying to like figure out like how the map works and like the paint yeah. wall and like kind of what you can and can't do and like certain where areas. Where you can jump into and where you can't. Cause like, I didn't realize that one spot sinks into like another area, but then other parts, oh, if yeah. you jump into it, it's the bottom and you die. And I was mm -hmm. like, oh shit. <laughs> yeah. Looks like we got ourselves a new follow kicking midgets 92. Awesome. Thanks oh, for the follow man. What's up? Kicking midgets. How you doing? I know who that is. Oh, That's, you do. Uh, okay, good. Yeah. Like, oh man, no, I can't remember what we were talking about. That <laughs> reminded me. I like literally quickly sent her a message really quick oh, to jump no. on here. Um, we were talking about something that that was making me think about it. This multiplayer. Oh uh, no, I don't know. I, I don't know. I can't remember. But oh we, man. Yeah. Speaking of multiplayer that's not multiplayer, her and I used to always use the PlayStation 4 chats and she would watch me play Resident Evil 7 through the stream yeah. share. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I've actually never done a whole lot of the stream sharing and like content stuff with PlayStation. I mean, I started streaming on PlayStation because I didn't have any other options, but um, that was kind of where I started streaming. But we got some chats. Let's check it out. Follow hype and what's up? <laughs> Jumping in the chat, Taijo. <laughs> yeah, uh, of course. I'm no. I'm glad she made it. You know, I figure she totally. probably was making it because I I just kind of posted on Facebook when we're going on here, and I haven't mm -hmm. been like thinking to message people specifically, but I know she always likes to jump on chats, and uh, that's awesome. She so I I know she's a big Fallout fan, so I wanted her Ooh. to see your background too because <laughs> there's the background. I think it was because I wanted to mention Fallout seventy six because I I want to. I want to play 76 because I heard that that one's good for making a bunch of traps, like yeah. setting up crazy traps. <laughs> yes, OMG. All right, so Fallout 76. <laughs> I love Fallout. I have almost every single Fallout game, Fallout 1, 2, Tactics, 3, 4, New Vegas. I've played them all. I've beaten all of those, um, except for Fallout 2. I'm actually currently working through Fallout 2 with my buddy, which has been awesome. Um, okay. But Fallout 76 is the only one I haven't played. And the biggest thing is actually because I'm not a huge, like, online player. I mean, like I've said, I'm the biggest one I play is Soviet Jump Game. And, like, that one's not, like, anything too crazy. I mean, you're yeah. not, like, working together with people or, like, anything like that. And so, like, yeah. Fallout 76, like, seems interesting. I've actually almost downloaded it several times. Just, like, maybe I might like it. I love Fallout. But then, like, just, like, the launch of that was so messy that it's, like, oh, man, it kind of makes yeah. it rough to want to dive into <laughs> it, you know? But I'm sure yeah. they've improved and added a lot, which I think is great. But it's just, like, that first impression stung so hard. It's, like, oh, this could have been awesome, but I feel like they just really crashed it. And it kind of just left, like, a weird impression on me of just like i don't you know 
I like think I'm like, oh, maybe I'll give it a try. Maybe it's good now. But then I just think I'm like, oh, but like it was so bad when it came out, and it just was like I don't know if it's still bad, you know. And so, yeah, well, I've heard it's improved a lot. I mean, say I hate to keep going back to it, but No Man's Sky. I mean, that yeah. one is another one. You know, I've been trying to get people to into it again. <laughs> well, not again, but I was. I was trying to convince everybody to get it again because they had the thing where you could combine your fleets, you know. And then mm. my brother Xander was showing me videos where in '76 you can team up and like make little trap rooms and stuff. And I was like, oh, oh cool. yeah, see, like that seems fun, you know, <laughs> dual surviving. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, '76 seems interesting because like. It seems like Fallout 4, but like online Fallout 4. I'm like, oh, if I had some cool friends to play with, like maybe. But then yet yeah. again, it's just like, ah, but like, is it going to be worth it? Am I just going to be dealing with a bunch of crap and it's just going to suck? You know, and you're like, just going to keep getting mugged by people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're going to get a bunch of losers on there that's like, hey, give me all your caps. And I'm like, uh, dude, I'm a level one and you're a level 130. <laughs> and it's just dude, like, some of those videos are hilarious, though. That guy that like makes the trap rooms and people yeah. go into it and they're like, please just let me keep my stuff. And he's like, <laughs> ah, sorry. <laughs> okay. ah. Fallout 76 pirate. <laughs> oh my God. That'd it's be an great. interesting, uh, just savage. Oh yeah. You get some people on there that are just total losers and ruin it for everyone. And then there's other people that are like super cool. And they're like, Hey, what's up newbie? Like stick with me. I'll help you out. And so right. it's like, what am I going to get? Yeah. So speaking of that, helping newbies, let's uh we're we're 30 minutes in here. Let me jump into my all-time favorite multiplayer game. <laughs> Cue the terrible um hip hop air horn. Beep, 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 oh beep. that. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right. I was thinking so, of basketball, but yeah, go for it. Oh no, no, no. No, forget that. We got we got to get that cheesy air horn <laughs> from the the rap songs, the hip hop songs, you know. I don't, I don't listen to back in like 2005 or something. I don't listen to the hip hops or the raps. I'm more no, like, none of them. I'm more into the rock and roll music and the the loud guitars and. You've never heard of the entrepreneurial gentleman group, the G Units. I've never heard of that. No, oh, <laughs> oh, that's unfortunate, sir. Well, now I have to check it out. <laughs> yes, you will. You will. You'll have to check out the clan of the Wu Tangs too. I've heard of the Wu Tang Clan, but I don't think I've ever <laughs> listened to a single Wu Tang Clan. That wow. Wu Tang Clan song. It's okay. Oh, we we all have our own genres. Yep. I, I, I've slowly moved into hip hop recently. Interesting. But, yeah, I've been. You know, like I, I got new music. I've been working on. I've been trying to like yeah. expand how I've been working on it. So I've been like going to different, like you know, genres to try to take different things. But um, oh my god, wait! I got to talk about this. <laughs> uh, sorry. So I was so excited to bring it up. I got to bring it up. Uh, all right. Bam, 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 bam. Because you mentioned, <laughs> what did you mention? Uh, people helping the, the, the new people. Okay. So it wasn't that I was new, but that I was younger. Okay. SOCOM. Mm. SOCOM US Navy SEALs. It was on okay. PlayStation 2. <laughs> it was one of the first video games to ever have multiplayer on PlayStation, if not okay. the first PS2 multiplayer game. Um, it was so cool because the original came with a headset and everything like ready to go to play online but sweet the single player game was the first game you could like speak commands to your teammates whoa so for example you were a four-man team is broken down into two people and you could be like fire team or fire team alpha or fire team bravo and then you'd be like move to or flashbang or you know like all sorts of different things you could tell them to do mm -hmm. anyways you know so it had this this multiplayer feature it was one of the first ps2 games to have it and my dad who's a firefighter he worked at this firehouse um that like has a little bit you know like some downtime going on because they're just a smaller suburb and mm -hmm. uh, a bunch of the guys there played it so they had a clan that they got together on SOCOM and because they all knew me growing up and everything, they let me be part of the clan. <laughs> That's awesome. So, yeah. So I'm like, you know, playing with firefighters, you know, and just as a kid and they would hook me up and help me out and teach me. And a few years later, SOCOM 2 comes out. SOCOM 2 is like my all time favorite multiplayer game ever. Oh, that very was cool. Like the best one I think that they released. Um, my favorite map was actually... Ooh, I don't know if I want to say Vigilant or Fish Hook. Both okay. were great maps, though. I think maybe Vigilant. Vigilant was an epic, like little town one. Um, but the biggest thing 
All right. So I hope I somebody's got to see this. Somebody's got to find them for me. <laughs> Man, it's, I've been trying to find these two people for the longest time. SOCOM 3 left the biggest impression on me, though, because the two players I've been dying to find again, mm-hmm. Iceman and Ice Shane. Ice just Shane like me, and Iceman. Yeah. Kay. Just like me and my dad, it was a father and son gaming on SOCOM together, but oh, they were in cool. Canada. <laughs> and they had the CK clan and we joined them in the CK clan. And uh, yeah, we, we were just this little group that played together and like we had the clan battles and <laughs> I just remember like gearing up with them. We had a guy named crest and we always were making jokes cause he had the toothpaste name. Um, we had <laughs> ducky. We had a guy named Cujo. Oh, sweet. Oh man. Oh dude. Oh, I miss these guys, dude. The old days. <laughs> They're I, old I friends. Back. Yeah, I, and I don't know how to find them again, and it bums me out. But oh, like, no. It was such an epic experience getting to play with Iceman and Ice Shane. And, like, I was younger even than, like, all of them, you know? Like, I think Ice Shane was a teenager at the time. But <laughs> they, like, brought me into the group, even though I was just some, like, random 7th grade kid or, like, 8th yeah. grade kid or something like that. And it was epic, man. I missed the SOCOM days. Oh, man. I never managed to play SOCOM, but I've heard really good things about it. And so it's like, if I ever, ever get around to it, I know the guy to talk to. Yeah. Iceman. I still have my original. <laughs> oh, yeah. If you can find him, talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I When you said their their group or whatever was called the CK clan, you said they're from Canada. I instantly thought, I was like, I really hope their clan name was like, canada clan clan so it was like ck santa for canada I think the clan CK was crazy killers i think we wow. were the crazy killers clan that's what it was killers with a z <laughs> no, well, yeah yeah i'm pretty sure because it, it, it was uh so they, that was the thing our k wasn't even an actual k they had it set up as like the the straight bar and okay. then like the the bracket thing or whatever you know oh like the, the sharp one or the greater, arrow greater uh, than or yeah 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 the alligator so that, mouth. Was, <laughs> that was how we were the the ck clan on socom 3 that's awesome <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh man the good days dude that was such a fun game that was the first one that had vehicles in it i remember always just getting run over by people in humvees and uh <laughs> getting so <laughs> mad what was this one dude they had it was like it's like a, a map that had three islands and okay. you could do custom games. And so people would set it up for sniper rifles only okay. and everybody would get the M87 ELR and just, it was a bolt action sniper rifle and people would just snipe each other between the islands. It was just all oh, out sniper man. warfare. And it was <laughs> so intense because it was the first game ever to incorporate ghillie suits. Oh, okay. so like, yeah, like everybody who beat the game on Commander or higher on single player had the ghillie suits. Mm-hmm. So like it's literally just snipers trying to find other snipers and ghillie suits on islands on PS2 level oh, graphics geez. on like <laughs> islands over like 50 meters away. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was great. Absolutely that's legendary awesome. game. Oh, that's great. Um, so I was thinking um, XCOM popped into my head when you were saying SOCOM. I was like, oh, XCOM. But then I started thinking okay. about strategy games, and I was like, okay, what kind of strategy games do you guys play? What is what? Is, what kind of strategy games are everybody into? Because there's so many, and it's so hard to pick a very definitive one. And I grew up playing a lot of Halo Wars, but then I replay it now. I'm like, that one's not the best. It's a, <laughs> it's a very okay strategy game. And then I play something like Civilization V, and then it's like, oh, cool, I just spent 40 hours on it, and I don't know what happened, you know? It's just, like, awesome. And so... I would probably say for strategy games, I would probably say Civilization V is my strategy game go-to. It's just so, like, okay. sucks you in, and they have, like, the, like, um, catchphrase or, like, their um, motto or whatever is, like, one more turn. It's like, oh, my gosh, yes, yeah, seriously, that is so true. <laughs> Which one? What's the E? Empire. Uh, oh, okay. I was, yeah. like, just out of, like, view. I, I still oh. have our tab open. Yeah, Empire at War. Yes, he's talked to me. Coolio's talked to me a lot about that one. And I keep saying, like, oh, I'll come play with you guys. And then I never do, and I feel really bad because it sounds Animal. awesome. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I love Star Wars. And, okay, I really enjoy Star Wars, and Empire at War looks awesome. I just haven't downloaded it. And eventually I will, Coolio, I promise. <laughs> it's been four months in the making or whatever however long ago it was that you first told me about it. And I was like, that sounds awesome. I'll come play. Nope. (laughs) 
<laughs> yep. <laughs> exactly that that reaction. Oh, yeah, there's so many uh, friends like that. You know, isn't that like the biggest struggle though? Trying to get your friends onto the same games you're playing, dude. Yes, it's like it's literally <laughs> the biggest battle. It's already hard enough getting everybody on the same console or platform or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Let alone on the same freaking game. Like <laughs> my brother's like, oh, get this game, get that game. I'm like, eh. Sure. I try to tell him these games. He's like, nah, that's boring. It's like, ah. <laughs> Well, I'm also just, a peasant, so I need free to play right now. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, if you jump game right up your alley, free to play. Exactly. That's exactly. It. Well, I feel so bad because, like I've said before, is like I'm not like a huge online gamer, and so like I have a hard time because people like I mean people in Coolio's group they're like, oh, we're playing Payday Two, and I'm like, oh, that sounds awesome. I I would love to play, and then I never do, and I feel really bad because like it sounds great, it'd be a fun time to hang out with these dudes. But it's just like I, for some reason, don't do it. I don't know what it is. And I feel really bad because it would be tons of fun and they're great dudes and the game looks fun. I just am terrible at buying multiplayer games. I don't know why. <laughs> it's hard, though, honestly. Like, there, there's so many that just aren't good for teaming up or, like, I don't know. Some games are rushed and then it's a little too imbalanced and just kind of doesn't make sense, you know. But, yeah, uh, you know, one of the biggest games I had to struggle with, but it's one of my favorite multiplayer actually because it reminds me of socom it was almost like getting a remake of socom which there's so much more i can talk with about about socom by the way because there's both good and bad the way it developed mad about it <laughs> damn slant six they ruined two of my favorite game series and then they disappeared off of the face of the earth Poof. yeah damn you slant six so i'll get into that in a minute but <laughs> please do wildlands was great because that was another game that a lot of four-man squad and um you were able to log in with like four other people and like literally just be this stealth unit were like going through uh where was it belize like the okay. mountains and belize and the forest and everything and it's just this huge open world i think it's like 24 square kilometers or something wow, that's awesome yeah it was a fun one and it was great <laughs> um uh, actually, Amore is asking about Ghost of Tsushima. So I haven't got to play that one yet. I think it looks great. He can tell you about that one. I, He's been killing it on there. I saw that pop up and I was like, yes. <laughs> Go for okay. it. Go for it. Ghost of Tsushima. I loved it. I thought it was one of the better games I've played in a while. I thought it was fantastic. It was so beautiful, very cinematic, and just tons of fun to play. That was like the biggest thing for me is like it was just really fun to play. It's like you play a game, you're like, oh, that was cool. And then, you know, you yeah. like forget about it. But it was like Ghost of Tsushima. It was just like I was thinking about it all the time. It was like all I did for like a week. It was perfect timing. I got it. My wife went out of town for like a few days. And so it was like I was home all alone. It was like a weekend, so I didn't work. And so it was like I played Ghost of Tsushima for like eight hours straight. I like bought a kimono and I was like wearing my kimono, <laughs> chilling out, playing Ghost of Tsushima. It was so nerdy and awesome. And I loved it. It was fantastic. Um, and then I did my review for it on YouTube and I was like, that was one of the better videos I did. And it's just like, cause it was an awesome game that just was so well done. Uh, yeah. I love Ghost of Tsushima. I could go off about that, but I have a whole video about it over on YouTube. So if you want to hear more about it, go check that out. I'll do it. I don't think I would plug. play it unless I got pro. My, my current yeah. PlayStation's dying on me and I don't oh, think it would no. handle it well. So yeah, I mean, I have just a basic PS4. I, I don't think, I don't know if it's like a day one PS4, but like it's, the basic like kind of tra trapezoid shaped ps4 with no rounded edges <laughs> and... well see i lived with that scrub that's asking about ghost of tsushima <laughs> um and that was in australia so the thing was i had that ps4 with me when i was out there mm -hmm. and i think that um using the converters even though it converts the power yeah. i think it was still straining the system to mm -hmm. like have to be working that way because pretty much all of my electronics ever since i was in australia they're kind of uh eh now like no. i think like it's just that conversion rate just messed with it a little bit too much so uh yeah i oh, like my ps4 it's on like eight or nine years now on wow. top of that so that conversion with the power i think just slowed it down a bit and yeah it's it's hot and on its way out so these That's higher unfortunate games it's just like you know just uh, breaking up like when i'm trying to play it yeah let's see definitely getting it when i get my ps4 back i highly recommend it 
like I said, if you want to hear more of my thoughts, I'll plug it again. I have a video over on YouTube. Just because I'm really proud of that video, I want to keep plugging it. <laughs> I got to watch her play, uh, what was it called? We Happy Few, right? Oh, and, um, I'm interested that was about one that was interesting. It's not a multiplayer game, so we're no. breaking our rule, but it's okay. It's fine. It, she, she took the time to come in here all the way from the other side of the world. So, That's awesome. Uh, yeah, before I actually left back for the U.S., her and I were chilling, <clears> and... Um, we would like try to go through the or i'd watch her go through the campaign and i thought it was really cool um i'm worried what were some of the problems that we were pointing out in it i know it was like a little a little glitchy there were mm -hmm. some times when uh like it seemed like you should have escaped but then you still get caught or like you should be hidden and then people mm -hmm. still see you or whatever um it was just kind of glitchy like it, it had a really cool vibe like it seemed yeah. like it was going to be super epic but i remember we were both a little underwhelmed with it, but I, I remember you said you had fun with it, right? Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's a definitely an interesting, interesting game, interesting com concept. I was excited for it. Mm -hmm. It just definitely wasn't what I thought it was going to be. Yeah, because that's the one that was supposed to be kind of like a Bioshock. Um, sorry, <clears throat> like a Bioshock spiritual successor, right? Where it's kind of similar in the idea of Bioshock, but something different is what I've heard yeah. about that. And then kind of same thing that there was just kind of underwhelming and not worth it is what I've well, heard about that. Well, they said it was going to be a survival horror game. And it, that, that was the thing. It didn't feel horror. Like mm -hmm. I, I had found out about the game because I was looking up upcoming horror releases. Um, yeah. And that was one of them I seen. And that was like ranked like number three for upcoming horror games. So I was like, wow. oh, man, like this is going to be something terrifying. It seems like, you know, you're yeah. constantly being chased or something. And then. Huh. I got, or well, she got it, and I watched her play it, and I was just like, oh, this is a little more, like, kidsy, <laughs> I don't know, like, the only, yeah, the only scary <laughs> thing is the gravity, yeah, definitely, like, it was just, I don't know, like, uh, it kind of had that, it kind of had, it, it was almost like if Fallout had a uh, Borderlands filter put onto it. Okay, kinda just kind of cartoony. Yeah, like it looked like it was realistic, but then somebody like drew pencil black outlines around like all important details of things, mm. you know what I mean? Yeah. But then they ended up like detexturizing things a bit. So huh. like there were high quality shapes, but then everything was low quality texture or oh, graphics, you know? That's lame. So it was, yeah, it was just kind of like iffy in between. I don't know. Uh, huh. It was an all right game though. Well, not, not the best, not the worst, but yeah. Yeah. Kind of sounds on par for what I heard about it. Um, it's funny you said kind of is like highlight the important things. And I instantly thought of, did you ever watch the old Scooby-Doo's back in like the 1960s? I mean, you weren't alive then and neither was I, but everybody yeah, watched Yeah, like them. the original. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Those are the best ones. Yeah. So I, I absolutely agree. They are the best ones. But I always loved those because they'd be like in a room. And they're like, huh, we got to find some clue in here. And you like look on like the side of the screen and there's like a giant key that's like super detailed and everything else around. It's like water, you know, yeah. <laughs> like I'm saying, you're like, I wonder where the clue is, Shaggy. I wonder where. And then he's like, hey, look, there's a key. It's like, duh, that's the only thing in the room that's like animate, like drawn. <laughs> <laughs> Every Resident Evil item ever. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> big time it's big like, oh, freaking time i need the key it's like well maybe look for the key that's excruciatingly highlighted well there was the one key in like resident evil 2 you like walk in the room and there's like a it's like taped to a whiteboard it's like is somebody missing this and you're like in fact oh I am. yeah in the resident <laughs> evil 2 remake it's yeah like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah i think it was next to the one that has the the cap thing too where oh. it tells you cap is the password for the one lock i think oh yeah when it's like scribbled on yeah. the whiteboard it's like upper locker room yeah Gee, yeah i always thought those were kind of cool because like you gotta like find some cool environmental thing to figure out how to unlock it um like i think there was one of them that you had to like find a piece of or like a picture and then like develop the picture and it's like here's the passcode for this one it's like oh that's kind of cool i find it cool yeah. when you have to like explore the environment to find the solution to something like you see something and you're like okay i don't know what the like the password to that is and so you got to like explore the environment and figure out what it is um for example i was playing i've been playing dishonored 2 and i was sneaking through this building and i found this safe and i was like oh cool a safe and then i kind of like was exploring around the room a little bit more and then like in the corner of this wall somebody had scratched the safe code into the wall 
and but it was like kind of tucked away and like i even had like move something out of the way to find it but i just thought it was so cool just because it was like whoa i found that safe code and like i didn't i wasn't like intentionally looking for it i kind of just stumbled upon it and i thought that was so cool yeah. once like i was like so stoked when i went back and like opened up that safe i was like yes that was awesome right you know it's one of those cool things too um that was kind of like one of those stumble upon things but it's one of those trial and error like those original resident evil features where like you know click on a garbage can 50 times and get the (laughs) special pictures and stuff so like yeah i totally feel you you know even in the um in the pt demo Mm -hmm. you can actually hear so like there's like numbers like etched into the walls everywhere okay and if you listen really quietly you can actually hear her still like etching into the wall slowly so like you can go to the spots and then like you hear it Oh, hi, animal. Um, <laughs> you hear it, but you can never like see it like actually happening. But I always thought that was huh. pretty cool. So, man, that game was one game I wish I could play. Like, oh, it looks you so play cool. It? I have not been able to play PT because when it came out, I wasn't like in the loop of it. I was like, oh, people are talking about this PT thing, and then I like didn't get it. You can play it. You I, can. I got a way you can play it. Oh no, we got some deep secrets. <laughs> <laughs> i've got it on my playstation 4 man they've got share play so oh. it's with share play on ps4 it's not just that you can see my screen i can hand over my controller controller to you Whoa. so you'll be about two seconds behind but there's not anything that's necessarily super time sensitive hmm. so like you'll still see what's going on on the screen and I'll then play it yeah you can still play it yeah the most i've like watched someone play it is when you streamed it for a minute <laughs> Um, cause you did that one stream of, of like a month and a half ago or whenever that was that you yeah, played after the Resident Evil mm-hmm. two stuff when I got wrecked on hunk mode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was brutal. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was yeah. so bad. And it was funny how I survived longer standing still than I yes, did that's sprinting right. and shooting everything. <laughs> you were it like, it happened to me again in re four recently. I got it? so pissed. Yeah. Cause I was like. I got mad because I took damage right away. I was fighting the um, El Gigante on professional. I took damage right away, and I'm like, all right, I might as well just, like, die because I'm not going to waste health after taking damage before even popping a shot on him, you know? Yeah. And I literally just stood there. So he, <laughs> so the first three times I died, he wouldn't get distracted by the dog that was supposed to be there helping me. Oh, okay, yeah. He wouldn't get distracted at all. Just kept coming after me and wrecking me. I was getting so <laughs> pissed. So the time I want to die... And I'm just standing there. He's yeah. just chasing the dog around. And then, like, oh. he finally comes by me. And then he's just, like, standing above me. And, like, he keeps going to hit <laughs> and misses. And I'm, like, Dude. literally unreal. <laughs> just unreal. kill me. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad. I feel like so many games are like that. Yeah. But, uh, I feel like, um, what's it called? SK was talking about it. Scripted. Mm-hmm. When games are scripted. So, like, a lot of sports games have scripted moments where it's, like, no matter how good your defending is or no matter how bad your offense is, like they're going to score or you're going to score because like the coding is just making it that way, you know, like, um, like for example, like there's moments I'm playing NHL against my buddies and like, it literally doesn't matter how much I'm poke checking them, how much I'm like checking them, how much my guys are on them. They just like push past all my characters go up and just score this most ridiculous shot ever and like get a goal and it's like you can tell it's happening from center ice it's like you're locked in you're getting oh, it oh gotcha you're getting this goal so i feel like i've been experiencing that in resident evil to an extent like going uh. through professional like it seems like it's like nope you have to die this many times first it's not allowed mm. like uh what was it the krauser battle dude okay. i was losing my mind i'm battling krauser okay, <laughs> okay. And I, every time I have a moment to shoot him is when you're supposed to dodge. Mm -hmm. And when the dodge thing comes up, it wouldn't let me shoot. So I kept dying because I was taking insane amounts of damage, trying to shoot him during his only weak point, but it wanted me to dodge. So since I couldn't Uh... dodge or shoot while I was dodging, I was taking (laughs) the damage because I wasn't dodging. And I'm like, all right, this is ridiculous. Oh man. (laughs) That fight is probably one of the most difficult parts of that entire game. First off, the time limit is stressful. And then mm-hmm. second off, you have to figure out like his like patterns and like the best times to attack and stuff while worrying yeah. about the time limit. And it's a tight arena anyways. And so it's like, oh my gosh, yeah. And he moves fast because he'll close that distance by, uh, what do you call it? Doing that like, you know, that 
like sidestep thing at you. you oh, know okay. What I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. I was like, I'm trying to remember, but yeah. Okay. Yeah, like because he'll he'll like put the the shield up, you uh-huh. know, like that arm thing, and then he's like scoots at you. That's right. And yeah. so like you'll you'll be aiming, and then he'll do the side to side, and then you got to aim again. And mm. oh my god, I love that game so much, but I <laughs> hate, hate it. I hate Krauser. Damn Krauser. I I remember the first time I was playing it. Um. I got to the part like when you first meet him and you have like the quick time event where they're having like the knife fight. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So the first time I was playing it, I was like scratching my face or I was just doing something or kind of just like zoned out. I don't remember what happened, but I was just kind of like sitting there just like watching the cutscene, And then like all of a sudden, like I had the controller sitting over there, which is a terrible thing to do in resident evil four. <laughs> <laughs> so I had like the controller sitting over there and I was just like, Ugh. you know, just like watching the cutscene. And then all of a sudden it's like press L2 R2 and I was like, uh, uh, and then I grab the controller and it's like way too late. Then Leon just like, just like, yeah. Leon gets stabbed like right at the chest. And I was like, oh, right. It's <laughs> like, Dude, all I've right. Been getting wrecked on promo. Well, I've been yeah. going a different route than I usually go though. Okay. So, man, I feel bad. We're talking about Resident Evil 4 and we're supposed to be talking about multiplayer we stuff. We can talk oh about my God. whatever we want. <laughs> <laughs> so, with the professional mode, man, I, I was like, I feel like I need to save my money and not waste my money on um like the original rifle since you're gonna upgrade it oh yeah and there's no point in upgrading the original shotgun since you end up getting better ones anyways so i ended up like i ended up not upgrading i didn't buy the rifle i didn't upgrade the shotgun and i didn't upgrade the handgun at all so i waited until i got the black tail for free Mm -hmm. then i got the riot shotgun and then i waited until i got to the castle to get the semi-auto rifle oh okay and that really made things difficult not having that extra power to use so i'm like not sure if i made the right move yet or not still (laughs) because (laughs) like i'm low on ammo like i i upgraded my weapons more Uh because i was because that was the point was to save the gold like so that way i didn't waste the gold on the upgrade to sell the weapon and get like barely anything that i put into it you know yeah so I just saved it to get the upgrade. So like I'm doing a little bit more damage than I typically would if I would have gone the route of upgrading and selling. But okay. I ran out of ammo a bit like quicker, you know, not doing as much damage. So gotcha. Yeah. Just give take. Give totally. take. I- yeah. I'm just getting absolutely wrecked right now though. So <laughs> just start doing a knife run. Just hit screw it and just knife run. Right. <laughs> Dude, it's so weird though, man, because like I got my nice PC now and for some reason my Resident Evil 4 Ultimate HD or whatever it's called, it's running super sketch. I don't know why. Hmm. Weird. Yeah, yeah, I just have it on the PS4 and I've I I like that. I was like, oh this is cool. <laughs> the PS4 one I'm playing is still stolen from Amore. I'm sorry. I accidentally Oops. forgot the disc in my PlayStation when I moved back from Australia. Oh, I didn't know no. it was in my disc tray. So you stole it, you thief. <laughs> yeah, I know. I got Australian Resident Evil 4 I'm beaten at the moment. So, <laughs> Sorry, Moray. Thanks for the game to play, though. It's been helping keep me sane. There you go. That's a good one. Speaking of sane, let's let's. I want to introduce this topic. <laughs> <laughs> We've talked about this before. Don't even act surprised. You know, you know, I accidentally stole your Resident Evil Four. It's like I've been looking for that for years. <laughs> <laughs> it was in my disc tray. I was playing before I left. I accidentally boarded an international flight with it in my PlayStation. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's not my fault. It's not my fault that you let an idiot stay <laughs> with you. That was from another country. Okay? That's your fault. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I forgot. <laughs> I, it's okay. So it's my, don't worry. It's my, my Resident Evil 4. We're all good. Now it's I, yours. I bought it. I sent you that, that one back. So it must have got lost in the mail. This one's my Resident Evil 4. I rebought it. So. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> oh, God. All right. Oh, wait. Oh. Sorry, go ahead. Go for okay. it because you said the insane thing. So yeah, so I was thinking about it. And I was like, what do you think is like the scariest or like most unsettling moment you've ever had in a video game? And it can be like any game. It doesn't have to specifically be a scary game. If there was like a game that like wasn't specifically scary, but it had a scary or unsettling moment. What do you think? What do you got? Hmm. I don't know. That's a tough question. I would have to say, like, man, 
<laughs> gotcha on that one. Because like there's there's moments that have made me feel uneasy. Like for example, like not to sound like I'm some like super PC person or whatever, because I'm not. You know, I'm all about like playing some wild games and stuff. But um, I sorry, I've got I've got a kitty cat here saying <laughs> hi to me. While I'm cat streaming. attack. Yeah, cat attack. Hello, Ooh. this is Grim, everybody. Well, he's, he's got some nice buddy, eyes. Usually. Um, Very cool. We call it. So we, like, in that Call of Duty game, like, I'm not super PC. I'll play some crazy stuff. But um, what do you call it? That one part in Call of Duty where you mess up the the people, you know, in the airport. Oh, okay, I just, yeah. like, I, like, I played that part. But I just because I knew that they were innocent people and like just thinking about like, oh, if this was real, like I just personally couldn't imagine doing it. So it just oh, kind of yeah. made me feel like weird because I was like, oh, like I just feel so immoral doing this right now. Like even in a video game, like I feel bad if I accidentally run over a dog and Ghost Recon Wildlands. Like if I'm driving <laughs> one of the cars, I feel terrible. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the cute cat comment, by the way. Oh, sorry. What did they say? Mine was. RDR one when hunting animals because I didn't hear them until they attacked me. Yeah, you know that was another <laughs> one too. I've had some animals absolutely shrek me. Oh, boom, dude! I know what it is. Oh, dude, I know what it is. I know right. what it is. Let's hear it. Okay, <laughs> fatal frame. Okay, fatal freaking frame. There was a moment. There's two moments. So there's <laughs> one that caught me off guard because they did a grudge moment. Okay. And there's a ghost that climbs out of a dresser that you go up what? to if you trigger it. Yeah. If you trigger it a certain way, there's a ghost that like you click like the cupboard top and then like the top pops up and she does that like neck breaking, like climbing oh. out of the thing and then stands up and comes at you. Oh, so geez. there's that. Okay. But one of the moments <laughs> that got me the most was another moment in that game. I can't remember which part it is, but it's in Fatal Frame 2. And there's just this enemy that like is literally just meant to just like pop up in front of you, just out of nowhere. Yeah. Like you're looking and um I can't remember what like you have to like scroll. Maybe oh I think it's actually another one of the bonuses. It's like you're on the bridge or something and like you're okay. looking and if you scroll you can see like out of nowhere there's a ghost that pops up in the distance and it's just like holy <laughs> shit <laughs> oh man okay so i want to comment on coolio's red dead redemption so actually red dead redemption 2 has probably one of my like most emotional moments in a video game because like red dead redemption 2 is such an emotional story for me and it was awesome and i totally know what you're saying in red dead redemption 1 because you get like the hunting going and then like all of a sudden you're just like something's following me which leads me to probably one of my most unsettling moments in a, a video game probably not the scariest, but like one of the more unsettling. I was playing Fallout 3 and I had finished talking to these people and I was like, okay, move on to my next destination. So I was like walking through the wasteland, just minding my own business. And all of a sudden I kind of had like this weird feeling and I was like, why do I feel weird, you know? And so like, I kind of just like listening, like still just walking, you know, just enjoying the Fallout 3 wasteland. And I was just, <laughs> and it just was like, I felt really uneasy. And I was like, why do I feel so uncomfortable? And so I rotated the camera around and there was one of the giant rad scorpions right freaking behind <laughs> me, dude. I chucked my controller. I mean, scorpions are like my biggest fear on the planet already. And then I had that and it was like, yeah. oh, it was terrible. It was like one of the most horrible things ever. Just because I kind of like that build up of just like I don't like something's kind of off like I don't know why I feel weird and then it just like that turnaround moment oh it's so terrible <laughs> you know what I have to actually rate is like the number one all time jump scare ever though yeah. like ever there's so many don't get me wrong there's so many games <laughs> that are good for it totally there's so many games that are good for it but I have to go for it because of what it means to me personally and like just the time and if it's your first run through, I remember scaring somebody that was my friend. Like I showed him, he was a Resident Evil fan, but he didn't play three. Okay. And I got him so good with it, dude. <laughs> Resident Evil three, the original, when you come down the stairs for the first time oh, and Nemesis yes. jumps through that window. Oh my gosh. That <laughs> literally <laughs> tore my body from dude, my body yes. into another dimension <laughs> that like, experiencing nemesis for the first time ever in such a small area that yeah. like shouldn't seem that dangerous 
unreal so brutal. too much to handle totally. too much <laughs> and so we we have a few chats we've missed so we let's do see. we do i'm sorry i didn't want to forget that one no you're good i think that's a great one but let's see last of us two a few times i had to walk away due to jump scares that i wouldn't expect Ooh, last of us one had a few of those that i remember that i was like i was not ready for that <laughs> um last of us two i have not played i've heard very interesting things about it and so maybe one day for me but i don't know um anything you got to say about that I haven't played it yet still. Um, Amore knows why I haven't played it yet, or well, why I haven't played two yet. I was playing through one on my PS3, mm -hmm. and that was when I first started finding out my PS3 was dying, and oh, um, no. there was a part that just kept crashing it. Oh. So I refused to start over on the first one again because I it was like the best I'd ever done on a video game on a first run through ever. Like yeah. I just beat a boss, and I still had almost full ammunition. That's I had a awesome. bunch of extra health on me. I had like a bunch of like the grenade things you could use. Like I was just set. Yeah. And the fact that I lost it there, I was just like, um, I don't, I don't want to start from scratch. Yeah. Oh, hey, look at that. We've got a another little buddy. Who's another cat that. attack. Oh my gosh, that one's cute. <laughs> um, let's this see. This one's Memphis. Memphis and Grim. Yeah. How fun. I don't have any cute animals to show off, so I'm sorry, friends. <laughs> uh, let's see. There's one other game that genuinely scared me, but not jump scare kind of way, but like what the hell did I just do kind of way. Spec Ops The Line. Okay, so Spec Ops The Line is an interesting one because I've heard a lot about that game in specific moments that um, kind of ruined it because it's like, oh, that's like a big part of that game, obviously. And it seems like that's one of very like psychological military game, which I thought was really cool. And I feel that it's very unfortunate that I've never played it. And I feel it's unfortunate that I had a lot of the big moments spoiled for me because it seems like a very like psychological game that like kind of makes you really think about the actions of what's happening on the game, which I think is awesome. Yeah. Um, I didn't realize that's what it was about. I didn't know it was like a psychological one. Yeah, interesting, huh? Because huh. I never played it. I didn't hear about it. And then I started watching a lot of like top 10 lists several years back. And that game kept popping up on like best gaming moments of all time. It's like Spec Ops The Line. I'm like, I've never even heard of this game before. And then there was like a specific moment. And I was like, oh, wow. And then just like that specific hmm. moment and several other things from that game kind of just kept popping up in like these lists and stuff like that. And I was like, okay, wow, there's a little bit more to this game than I thought. So, okay. yeah, Spec Ops The Line. I'll check that out because they've got it on the PlayStation now, I think. So, oh, yeah. Because it was a PS3 game, right? I think so. I don't know a whole lot about it. I know Nolan North did a voice in it, and I that's I think that's all I know. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. But, yeah, check it out. Um, yeah, Spec Ops The Line. Interesting one. I'm really I'm glad I've met someone else who's played that because I've never played it, but I've heard a lot about it, and I've never met anyone else who's played it. And I feel like, okay, from what I've heard, it seems like a game that more people would and or should have played. So that's interesting. You know what uh, I think we need to be able to do eventually is to be able to do screen sharing stuff so we can show, like, video clips. Because, man, you know what I want to show are um, one of the games that just wrecked me as a kid was Clock Tower um it the the original like clock tower game it okay came, like they had a ps1 release of it i think it was and dude i just remember the like the dude with the giant scissors just like chasing you through all these rooms and it was absolutely terrifying like you hide in a closet and if he knows you're there it's like oh don't matter i'm just gonna shiv through these closet doors <laughs> and uh I remember being terrified because huh. I had gotten like a batman tent as a kid and okay. for some reason we set it up in my room <laughs> And so I was terrified because there's just this Batman tent set up in my room and I'm yeah. like trying to go to sleep next to it after playing this game. So I oh, keep picturing no. that the scissor dude is just going like, to like come out of the tent and like <laughs> stab me. Oh, to man. Like a seven year old kid or something. I was like Brutal. six or seven. And it was, oh my God, I was, yeah. I was absolutely terrified. Yeah. I never heard of it. I had to hurry and look it up real quick because I was like, oh, I've never heard of Clock Tower, but that seems interesting. Dude, Clock Tower 3 was on PS2, and that one was pretty good. There were a couple enemies that were, like, really lame, but that was another one that did get my heart pumping again. Like, that first enemy chasing you around, oof, man, yeah. it's it's tough. Like, they're on you, and it gets your heart pumping because, oh, I don't man. know. There's, you know, as low quality as the game is, dude, nothing is like Nemesis. Original Nemesis, though. 3 remake, slacking. Slack-a-lacking. 
Yeah. And I think that the original, just getting chased by him all over town, all the places he could pop up, terrifying, dude. Oh, man. Yeah, from what I've seen of the remake, it's, like, really hard because I remember playing that original one and having intense moments like that, and it just doesn't seem like you get that with the remake. And I was like, but that was the best part of the original one, so that's super unfortunate it really is honestly like there were so many great moments where he would show up just unexpectedly um and i feel like you could learn his patterns in this new one too much you know like yeah. just it's so obvious it's like yep i get it like between uh, this restaurant so and going between the train like he's gonna pop up you know and that's yeah. about it like oh that's so and from the original i missed the the restaurant battle where he's like by the fountain and then i missed the clock tower battle oh the clock tower clock tower is carlos oh man that had one of my favorite puzzles too the the stone one that one was like so hard to figure it took me forever i would always cool one though (laughs) (laughs) very cool um let's see so kicking uh said it's not great but i played it anyways talking about last of us 2 um, yeah, I heard very mixed things about Last of Us 2, and it was very unfortunate because it was one I wanted to play and kind of talk about, but I, like, heard so much going into it, and, like, kind of when it was coming out, I feel like I kind of had already, like, formulated an opinion on it, even though I hadn't played it, which I didn't think was fair, and so I was like, I kind of almost don't want to play it because I feel like I've already played it, and I already feel like I don't like it because of what I've heard, and I was like, that's just not fair, and it was very unfortunate. Yeah. Because I probably could have had a either solid experience or not. The difficult thing for The Last of Us is because I played the first one a few times and I really enjoyed it, but I don't have like a strong emotional connection to the first game like some people do. And I think that was the hard thing with this. The second game is certain story elements happen and like people are so emotionally attached to the first game that it really hurt their expectations or their emotional connection or whatever. So like I didn't yeah. have that, and so it's like maybe I wouldn't have been so affected by that, or they wouldn't have. It wouldn't have swayed me one way or the other so it was very unfortunate that i had so much information given to me before i even had a chance to play it and so now i feel like i can't play it because it would just wouldn't be a fair evaluation of the game a very fair analytical uh look at it you know and yeah i mean same thing for me too kick and i just like there was this big old leak thing and i was just like being on twitter and youtube i was just like i saw so much of it and it was just like that's eh, ruined now unfortunately yeah i feel like it got ruined for like well over 80 percent of the whole community yeah. like it got ruined for almost everybody um i feel like that was brutal it sucks when people do that honestly i'm not even gonna lie like i had somebody that like i wasn't super close friends with but i was chill with we met over a chill way and i was connected with him you know just through that yeah um but i actually ended up deleting him because i got super mad sorry it's been long enough since it's come out now so i'm gonna talk about a spoiler for you know end game but uh like, you know, uh, Avengers Endgame was coming out. I mean, have you seen it? Have you seen Endgame yet? I am actually not a big Marvel fan. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, as so, long as I'm not spoiling it for you. But I, I, mean, I, I know what like happens. Years now. Yeah, I yeah, know what happens. So, like, the fact that, like, I mean, all right. So, just in case somebody hasn't seen it, I guess I won't spoil it. I don't know how probably, they wouldn't know by now. but Probably the safe way, but. Yeah, so basically he ended up spoiling who dies at the end. Okay. And it was like literally two days before I got the chance to see it. Oh, no. And I was hoping it wasn't true. And yeah. I got mad because it was somebody I really liked a lot. Mm-hmm. And it was somebody I didn't expect to like a lot because like funny enough, I thought they were lame back in the day just because of like how <laughs> they looked in the comics. Just wasn't a fan. But yeah because of how the actor portrayed like their character i liked it a lot so yeah i was just so mad and like i hate when people (laughs) i hate when people do that yeah we don't we don't talk about it so yeah it was a it was a bummer i i ended up deleting him because of that because i was like really dude like this Uh, is literally like how how long was that being built up for like freaking like 12 yeah 20 something movies like yeah so much and like lit and so i even seen somebody ask he's like dude why would you say that and he's like i don't know it's just bored and i'm like you are literally just dude, a terrible person that's terrible like, to ruin something that so many people have waited so long for like yeah. just because you're bored like you are literally like, you're just a bad person like there's no other <laughs> way to put it like because there's no reason to do that like it's like totally you're gonna ruin all that for people just because you're bored like that's just that's just a bad person if you had power you would make evil moves then because you're bored like yeah. you would just do shady things so seriously though the fact that people do that with big games it sucks yeah no that whole last of us 2 situation was 
kind of a nightmare. <laughs> and I mean, so. it's cool when people tear games apart too, you know, but it kind of sucks. Like that's what sucks about the, the early releases for things like with the resident evil channel, it's been fun trying to tear things apart and like figure out what's going on. But at the mm-hmm. same time now, like when people are getting all these releases, it's like, well, what's the point when we know the whole game before it's even out, you know, yeah. like, why am I going to pay $60 for a game that feels used now? Cause I already got the whole story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I always do my very best. I do this with like almost anything. If there's like a trailer or like a gameplay video or like most anything, I do my very best to like stay away from it. Cause I get people sometimes like, Hey, you should do like gameplay reaction videos to like games that are coming out. It's like, I would love to, but I love going into a game, not knowing as much as possible. Like death stranding. I didn't know anything. I didn't watch any of the trailers, nothing. I just knew what it was, knew kind of a little bit about what it was about. And I was like, okay, cool. Good enough for me. Like it just seems interesting. And I loved it. It was like, I didn't know anything about the gameplay i didn't know anything about the story the world nothing going into death stranding and like so everything was a surprise and i mean that was even the same thing with like doom eternal i was so stoked for doom eternal but i didn't watch anything going into that so i was so stoked when i got into doom eternal and there was just like all these new gameplay things and stuff like that and it was just like i didn't know any of this going into it so it was just like such a pleasant surprise and so yeah i'm definitely one to kind of stay back from trailers and stuff because i like to be surprised but also at the same time yeah. it's kind of hard to be like am i going to be interested in this or not so it's kind of more so just like is the concept interesting and kind of go from there well maybe not even uh like necessarily the what do you call it like the trailers and stuff but even just mm-hmm. how far people will rip into things like even just trying to like yeah. get that information they're not supposed to get like i feel like it's often more just like randos that have like totally. these leaks that you know spoil it rather than the companies themselves so yeah It's unfortunate for sure because it's like they put so much time into it and they want to try to keep it contained so that people can be surprised by it or have like a very genuine experience and then someone spends their whole day trying to ruin that experience for everyone else and I feel like that's what happened with The Last of Us 2 for sure. Yeah. Yeah, you ain't wrong. Yeah. But you know what? I got got to get back to something really quick before we forget because we've we've been on here for a bit and I don't want to get to where we get off before I get back to it. Because I said I'd go back to it. Okay, okay. I gotta go back to it. So Slant 6. Oh, yes. Don't get me started on Slant 6. But I I'm did it. You, you brought it, it up. <laughs> Don't get myself started on Slant 6. I did nothing. That was, this I, is not your fault. This was something that we meant. Something that just got mentioned reminded me of it again. There's like okay. things that keep making me think of the random moments. <laughs> Slant 6, okay. My favorite game series okay. is Resident Evil. My favorite multiplayer series, SOCOM. Can you guess? Can you guess who made the worst games ever associated with those titles? Can you guess what company did it? I'm going to take a guess. Is it Slant 6? It was Slant 6, hey! dude. How did you know that? It was Slant I, 6. I, it just so, felt right. It felt right. <laughs> they <laughs> took SOCOM 4 okay. that was like waited forever to come out. Okay. I was waiting forever for this to come out. It was cool because it was one of the first things to utilize the PlayStation Move stuff, and mm-hmm. it had like a the gun thing. Okay, so that was fun. The game was nothing like SOCOM. They were like, "Oh, let's try to take Call of Duty and make it like two percent stealthy," okay. and now it's SOCOM because these guys are called Navy SEALs. The online <laughs> mode terrible. Literally, it was Call of Duty online. Oh, like lame. basically, I was so pissed. Oh. And then they came out with SOCOM Confrontation. That one was okay. Actually, no, SOCOM Confrontation came out first, I think. And that okay. was how they tested it. SOCOM Confrontation was actually kind of decent. It was a yeah. little bit like COD, but it had a lot of customization for your weapons and stuff. Okay. And it was still about working as a team. Camo was still important. And like it wasn't so much like COD. But man, 4 was terrible. Oh, so lame. just to, to help you understand who Slant 6 is, Guess who made Operation Raccoon City? <laughs> um, can, can I get a multiple choice on this one? You can't. Oh, okay. You can't. Um, There's a, six can answers and they're all slanted. Here, I'm, I'm going to phone a friend real quick. All right, phone a friend. I got gotcha. you. My phone's on silent, though. So. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. Here, hold up. I know just the person to call. I'm going to call this Do person. You? They're going to know who it is. I, I, mm-hmm. Oh man, it's right. Uh, let's find out. Oh, hold up. Wait, I'm getting a call really quick. Oh, really? Gonna... Yeah, give me a second. All right, it's good. 
Uh, h- hello? Hey, so I'm I'm doing this podcast right now where I'm talking about some video games, and they the the guy I'm working with, he, he's he's all right, but anyways, um, oh, okay, yeah. So hold he, on, I got a friend asking me about a podcast question really quick. Just okay. give me a second. Yeah, you're good. All right, yeah. So sorry, what's up, man? <laughs> so so I this guy I'm doing a podcast with. He asked me okay. who did was it Raccoon City Operations. Uh, oh, Operation Raccoon City, bro. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. So don't even get me started on that company. I know what this guy's talking about. Okay. And they're 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 bad people. Yeah. Okay. So uh, he's just asking me. He he asked me. He's like, okay, who made that game? And I I don't know. So I'm phoning a friend. So you're the first person I thought of. What do you what do you think? Uh, it's Disney. Disney. Okay. Disney. Disney made it. Okay. Are you positive about that? You seem very you seem very positive. I just want to make sure. Uh, yeah. It's it's Disney Plus series that, oh, okay. that made Operation Raccoons. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't make any sense, no, actually, but okay. It's a company called called uh, Slant Six, I think. Six okay. Six Slants. Six Slants. Okay. Six Slanties. Six Slanties. <laughs> yeah, six vigilante Slanties. Okay, six individual Slanties. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Awesome, man. Really exactly. appreciate it. Okay. Oh yeah, no worries, no worries. Yeah, you take care of yourself. Thanks. Awesome. Cheers. Bye. Right, yeah. Later. Okay, so okay, sorry, I was on the phone real quick. Oh no, it's all good. So um, I called my buddy, and he said it was slant sixties, individual slants. The sixties, yeah, yeah. It was something having to do with the sixties and some slanted people. Yeah, and he said Disney they were the ones who made Operation somehow. Raccoon. City. Yeah, yeah, yep, yep. Was, was that Disney. it? He created Operation Raccoon City <laughs> as a media device to boost uh, Goofy for the Kingdom Hearts series. Oh, okay, perfect. <laughs> Yeah, this is yeah. some solid conspiracy theories we got going. This is, <laughs> yeah, we need to make an Illuminati triangle for it and oh, get yeah. it on YouTube. There we Confirmed. go. Confirmed. <laughs> Confirmed. Yes, but yes, yeah, Slant Six made the freaking <laughs> Raccoon City of operations. I should have Coolio. Coolio's calling me out. Boom. <laughs> He should have. I thought that's what you were doing at first, and then I nope. saw my phone ringing, and I was like, "Oh man, we're getting it." It's, it's like happening. We just broke the thirtieth wall, so we broke wall. the slant sixth wall. So, <laughs> oh, um, terrible slant six. I can't believe. I know, them. right, dude? So they made Fire Team Bravo for okay. PSP. They made Confrontation for these are all SOCOM games. They okay. made Confrontation. They made four. Then they decided to jump into Resident Evil. Actually, okay, so perfect. I, I have my <laughs> computer open literally for these reasons. I know there was another game that they made. Okay. Slant 6 Productions. I Disney think it was another Resident Evil. <laughs> um, yeah, right. So Disney did not make any games worth noting. I don't know. Has no. Disney made any games that it's like, eh, it's fine? Uh, <laughs> I mean, well, they kind of have their old games. Like the... The PlayStation One games. Oh wow, dude! They made it even before. So for some reason, it's funny okay. they actually don't even give them credit for SOCOM Four. I don't know why, but I know <laughs> that, that they're bad? the ones who made it. Yeah, like it's not even listed on here because I know Zipper didn't didn't make it. Okay. Um, so they have Tactical Strike. That's right. That one was so bad. That was another PSP one. Oh, no. Apparently, they got started off on some games called Max's Pirate Planet on iOS, Android, and Kindle Fire. Whoops. They have a game called Galactic Rain. Okay. The Bowling Dead. <laughs> the Bowling and, Dead? <laughs> yeah, and that that's it. Until they decided to come in and make these terrible SOCOM games. Okay. And then they were like, all right. We've screwed over SOCOM. Zipper Interactive no longer <laughs> exists. This whole multiplayer series that basically launched PS2 multiplayer gaming is just gone. Poof. Let's go for Resident Evil. Let's, yes. Let's kill it, boys. We got this. <laughs> That's how that pitch meeting went. Oh. Bam. Oh, my God. By the and way, then, Bowling yeah. Dead is my new uh, bowling team name. Is it? Yep. Get it. Yeah, I'm curious to look these up now. I don't want to go like, like too ham while we're on stream getting distracted totally. with technology because I'll get so distracted. But these are the only notable games that they made. So they literally ruined my favorite shooting series. Uh-huh. Like the first online shooter I ever played. Ruined. Absolutely loved it. They just backhanded it. And then they jumped onto <laughs> Resident Evil destroyed what could have been an epic online resident evil game could uh, they, they said it was going to be so different too that's one of the games they were talking about things it was supposed to be and it wasn't 
like um, opening or not opening certain doors and affecting later playthroughs or what other people do. So that wasn't in there. Um, So they literally destroyed Resident Evil and then they fell off the face of the earth (laughs) because they ruined so many games. And that's all they they. did. (laughs) They just ruined games. They're like, I'm out. (laughs) Literally. They're like, let's just take down these series and uh, we're going to call it a day. Bam. Problem solved. There you go. Sounds yeah. like a successful day. <laughs> they fell off the planet in 2012. Oh, says yeah. That's, well, that's when the world was supposed to end. So maybe it was a metaphor yeah, for maybe. Yeah, maybe they were like, ah, <laughs> oh, let's just take everything down with us. Maybe they sacrificed themselves to save the rest of the planet. Oh, <laughs> they knew something maybe. we didn't. And so why did they have like, to sacrifice my favorite game series? It's the sacrifice they were willing to make. <laughs> We're here today because they killed Resident Evil. <laughs> I had to lose my favorite things to save the world. That feels unfair, and uh, I want a refund. <laughs> I don't think I they can offer a refund. PlayStation. Oh, I want a PS5. Dude, Somebody same. send me a PS5. I deserve it. I yep. lost my favorite things to... You know what? No, no, no. You know what? Not somebody. The the creator of Slant 6, if you're seeing this right now, <laughs> I, hope I so. demand... A PS5 when it comes out because you literally destroyed my favorite game series. So instead of taking you to a court for emotional distress <laughs> and just like abuse from my series being destroyed after these years, I'll accept a $500 PS5 as compensation. Damn. Problem solved. <laughs> what? What? You're, you're going to have a PS5 out there? You've, you've got a baby now. You can't buy PS5s. <laughs> Well, at least not for a couple of years until you got some you time. Know, Max ready to start gaming. Once Max ready to game, then it's it's time to start getting the PlayStations again. I know. I think like when I have kids, eventually it's like, okay, how far can I let them game before my wife kind of cuts that off and be like, nope, no more games. You got to go outside and play. And it's like, but Amber. <laughs> <laughs> And then she like That's leaves and I'm like, all right, we're gonna play Grand Theft Auto, but don't tell mom. No, right? She's sitting in the other room, and I'm sure she's like over there, just like, oh. <laughs> no, I will not play Grand Theft Auto with my kids until they're of age or when their mom's not home. <laughs> right? That's how it was for me with my dad. My dad was letting me play Grand Theft Auto when I was like super young, but my Sweet. mom didn't want me having anything to do with it. Oh man, it's so it's good. funny because my dad let me play violent video games, but didn't let me watch violent movies, and my mom would let me watch violent movies, but not let me play violent <laughs> video games. So it's like, all right, I just got to go to the other place to. I just to get don't know what I want. Buildings. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I've told great, this like. What's up? Oh, go ahead. You you probably have something. Uh, I was just gonna say, like, I you know, I grew up like on gaming because of my dad. So like, literally, yeah. it, I, it was still in my high school years, like gaming with my dad. You That's know, awesome. like, so uh, I didn't have to worry about anybody getting in trouble for that. We were we were just gaming together, and then we go great. out and play sports too. But you know, then we would play SOCOM and dominate online. That's all good. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Okay, so I've told this story before on a game for your thoughts, but I haven't told it here, so it's okay. So I had one time I was playing Grand Theft Auto V with a bunch of my buddies, and so I was like, my parents were like, no Grand Theft Auto, and so I was like, okay. So like, I had my buddies, and I was like, if my parents come down, we're playing Need for Speed, and don't do anything bad, okay? So I was like, all right. Seems fair, right? (laughs) Okay. So we're playing Grand Theft Auto V, just driving around, and my dad comes down unexpectedly. My dad was always so stealthy when he'd come down the stairs. I mean, my dad's kind of like a bigger guy, and so he's not like necessarily like stealthy, but like when he was coming down the stairs and you're doing something you weren't supposed to, (laughs) he would just like all of a sudden pop up, and he'd always do this thing where he'd like kick open the door. So you'd just be like sitting there just like playing Grand Theft Auto V, and it was just like, bam, and the door flies open. You're just like, ah! (laughs) <laughs> anyways so he does that and like it's like me and my three buddies were like oh crap and he's like hey what are you guys doing and we're like oh just playing need for speed nothing too nothing too crazy and he's like all right and he kind of is like sitting there like watching for a second and he grew up in california southern california so we're like driving around grand theft auto and he's like oh isn't that the santa monica pier and we're like yeah and i'm like i'm i don't remember who was playing but i was like okay whoever's playing just don't do anything Grand Theft Auto, we just drive, okay? Just yeah. drive around. Don't do anything bad. But anyway, so my dad's just, like, kind of sitting there hanging out, and it's just, like, I'm stressing, like, okay, please, Dad, don't stick around for too long, and then just, please, Grand Theft Auto, don't do anything Grand Theft auto You know, like, you're driving around, and your character's like just, like... people randomly jumping in front of your vehicle. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> my dad's sitting there watching us play this lady comes strolling across the street and i don't remember who was playing but it was just like there was no way to stop it <laughs> and just <laughs> boom and my dad starts busting up laughing he's like dude you just tagged that lady <laughs> and i was like <sighs> <laughs> oh my Dude, god he was so he was like dying it was so funny and i'm like i mean all my friends like ah, yeah holy crap <laughs> that's not supposed to happen so in this great. game <laughs> yeah oh no that yeah whoops <laughs> Oh, oh my it was god. so good it was so funny that's awesome dude yeah. that is epic it that was is great epic. <laughs> man you know it was funny too because i remember playing the very first like uh grand theft auto game oh and yeah yes one and my cousin was letting me play it and he went to put in the cheat codes for me and uh-huh. he's like you have to look away from the screen because it's bad words like you can't know what it is i'm like oh this Ooh. is a bad game <laughs> <laughs> can't look at this screen uh, yeah <laughs> and you're like oh, okay yeah right the, the, the days of the yeah. little little peak and eyes for sure yeah. you're like oh, oh, i don't see anything <laughs> i remember i was like six or seven or something when like grand theft auto 3 was out yeah and i remember just being a kid going around running people over and flying tanks and then driving on the water <laughs> oh man <laughs> all the crazy oh, cheat God. codes going on that or one or maybe that was Maybe that was Vice City with the flying, the flying vehicles and driving on the water. I, don't I know think if you that was. That, free yet. that sounds the right. Vice City free was getting the fire engine and getting the tank because it was called the Rhino, right? Uh huh. Yeah, I remember that was the big thing to do in uh, right. in Grand Theft Auto back in the day on three. Because oh, there was Grand that like bi- that bridge near the. Uh, there was like a skyscraper they were building. You had to do the. Remember the remote control helicopter mission where you had to like bring the explosives like through oh yeah that was vice city yeah was that in vice city i Mm -hmm. thought that was yeah because burt reynolds character gives you the mission he's like who dowdy so there's another one that's in three (laughs) then where it's where you meet the chick that is on the cover that has the black jacket and the red on. but she gives you a mission over there and i remember like that had something to do with the tank over there and it was always like a massive spot to just rack up points and get money nice oh grand theft auto 3 was interesting because i never had it on ps3 i think i do now actually um remember when i was telling you i was we found that box so it was my brothers that had like all the games and stuff in it i think that one was in there and i know for sure vice city was but i feel like 3 was also in there as well and I had never seen or played a physical copy of three. I actually have it on my iPad and I beat it on my iPad. <laughs> <laughs> what of all things mm-hmm. to beat it on. Yeah. I mean, I oh have my it like God. right here. I just have my, my iPad <laughs> and epic. I just, I have, uh, I think I have vice city and San Andreas on here too. Yeah. Wasn't I, three the one that had the band version, like where there's no, like something appropriate. No, was was San Andreas. Two? Was that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because they had it was the hot coffee mod, and um, someone. Oh, mm-hmm. that's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah, like take the girl on the date. She's like, "Why don't you come in for some coffee?" And then it like leads to some yeah. super terrible mini game, quick time event. It's like, oh no. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I remember in Vice City you could unlock the strip club, and I remember trying to hide that from my parents, thinking it was going to be something <laughs> crazy, and that there was nothing crazy that went on. It, actually, yeah. the crazier moment was when you help out the porn star chick oh yes candy sucks up, yeah <laughs> she ends up you get, get the there's a what do you call it the spotlights um, there's like a spot oh yes of her breasts that go up there That's and right. i remember always <laughs> having to make sure that that was never on the screen if my family <laughs> came in <laughs> Oh my oh, god. Oh, that's awesome. Video games are wild. Dude. Man, I can't believe they got away with that. There's some things that I'm like, wow, I can't believe they got away with that. <laughs> right? It's insane. Right? It's Video brutal. games are, are wild, man. I can't believe that they're... Uh, never mind. This is going too out of control. <laughs> we're we're going to go back towards normal video games and not uh, strip clubs and video games. <laughs> Otherwise, we might as well talk about Duke Nukem forever. Oh, dude. (laughs) Such a wildly inappropriate game. That's a horrible game. (laughs) Oh, my God. Oh, jeez. Oh, my God. It was a good one, though, but terrible. But it was good. Was it good? I only heard bad things about it. (laughs) I mean, well, it depends. If you're talking about the PlayStation 1 one, that one was pretty good. The PS3 one was terrible. I only played the demo, and I was like, this ain't even worth it. 
Because there was like the classic Duke Nukem that was awesome. And he's like, time to kick ass and chew bubble gum, but I'm all out of gum. Right. You know, it's like that. Right. And he's like, that one was great. It was like basically Doom, but different. <laughs> and yeah. then there was Duke Nukem. I don't know what other Duke Nukem games there were, but there was for sure Duke Nukem Forever. And I feel like that was the, I might be totally wrong about this, but that was that the one that was like in development for a really long time. And then it came out. Oh, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I even have a case somewhere that has like all the list of the cheat codes to play. Yeah, in it. yeah. Dude, this is my binder that has like all my classics in it. Ooh, that's some all good stuff the right there. Games. Oh, very Tony Hawk's Pro Skater Three. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I love that game. Oh wait, those are some movies. But here, see, look, SOCOM. Oh yeah. SOCOM Three. <laughs> that's awesome. SOCOM Confrontation. Due date. <laughs> By, by uh, Slant Six. It doesn't say it on the front though. Look at that. They're so so ashamed of themselves. They're so ashamed. <laughs> oh, That's man. awesome, dude. I don't. I can't remember if I was asking you about it. Let uh -huh. me find one of the greatest games I've ever played because it's just funny and cheesy, and it's impressive because it's made in claymation. This cost me $116 to get this game like new. Goal Monkeys? Yeah. Never heard of that. Dude, it huh. is such a great game. It is an entire game made out of claymation on PlayStation 1. Wow. It's funny as hell because the thing that stands out to me the most, there's this moment in there. Okay. Where the guy goes back to his lab and he starts eating he's like cooking some pork and beans and it starts playing that that song beans beans the musical fruit the more you eat the more you you know and it's mm -hmm. like this video of him eating it and then like this monster is coming in to go and attack him and the monster's <laughs> about to sneak up behind him and he just farts this oh, huge no. gas bubble, <laughs> and it just melts the the monster's face away oh. and he turns around He's just like, huh? <laughs> and like, oh no! I was, I was a little kid, you know, when I seen yeah. that again, one of the first games I ever played, and uh, <laughs> oh man, I, that stood out to me so much. Like, yeah. I, it cracks me up every time seeing it. The, oh. Like intro to it, it's like the bad man fell from the sky, and then it's like this story <laughs> about this guy taking over the skull monkeys, and oh man, it's a good one. It's huh. a good one. Interesting. Yeah, I've never heard of that, but. Man, claymation's and claymation is intense. Yeah, and especially but, for a video game, it's impressive yeah. that they pulled it off. That's awesome. Um, well, I just looked over the clock. We've been rocking for an hour and a half. Um, how you feeling? I'm good. I think we can. I mean, unless you're tired, I can go for that two hour mark again. We just got another viewer right now too. So <laughs> I don't. I'm not sure if I can make it another two hours. Maybe another. No, no, not another two hours. Oh, up to the two, up to hour the two hours. Oh, yes. Okay. Um, yeah maybe i don't know i'm kind of getting like that super yawn going oh just... man you're all right it's all good <laughs> yeah i was tired all day but then we got this going and i i got hyped again so you're good. I, I, i'm on my second win but no i totally get you man you had to work today yeah i just had to stop working recently so i had a little bit more time to catch up i was just being totally complete lazy bum I waiting to hear from the government today and uh <laughs> playing resident evil 4 that sounds awesome oh my god yeah it's, it's been a blast with all this work stuff and totally all these changing times so good times or not yeah <laughs> uh, i mean hey at least there's more time for this now so i mean totally totally set up another show soon i feel like we should get a yeah. schedule going totally i mean tuesday nights seem pretty awesome for me it works out pretty well then i have uh not keeping the wife waiting in the other room or anything like that so yeah but um yeah, I'm kind of cool with whatever, but if we want to call it good for today and that works for me, then I can go take a nap and eat some chocolate or something. <laughs> You're all good, my man. Sweet. You go do that. I'm going to try and play a little bit more Resident Evil Pro. I think that we should find awesome. some games we can try and stream on here together sometime. That'd be fun. Like, play together, um, have yeah. it be like themed. So if you guys awesome. think that sounds good, let us know. Send in submissions if there's anything you want us to talk about in Please. future shows or anything uh, you want mentioned in general. Questions. We kind of just like have that starting topic and then branch off from there. So, um, yeah, guess on the podcast, we're going to have one soon. Yeah. Actually, my buddy, uh, Kami, he is a huge rocket league gamer. Actually, he's like ranked one of the official teams, like playing That's like awesome. members, you know, 
Yeah, he's he's an absolute beast at it. Um, he said he would love to come on here. Yeah. We actually want to have an episode about VR. So I, I want to talk about some VR stuff. He actually streams a lot of Oculus Rift. So okay. I was saving that for when he comes on. So keep an eye out for Kami coming on soon. He's Chameleon Air on, um, on Twitch if you want to find him. He's got a Rocket League jersey on. Awesome streamer, awesome dude. He's on Australia time, though, so be aware of that. Um, but yeah. That'd be fun. Yeah, no, I mean, Coolio suggested Druid. He's an awesome dude, another really rad streamer. He would be fun, too. So yeah, if you guys have any uh, folks you want to see what we can do, we'd love to look into it. Sometime about movies. Movies could be fun. I mean, do that yeah i'm totally cool to chat about anything and everything yeah we called it press start to play because we're both gamers you know we want to orient about movies but we actually chat about it like the other day that we're down to talk about whatever as long as yeah. we stay like pretty on theme at the start just so it's not random mess you know what people know what they're coming for or at least a little bit each totally time, so yeah, yeah. No, that sounds good but um yeah do you have anything you want to like plug or like anything you're like hey check out this or anything like that are you feeling no, I mean, that was, this was a fun chat for sure totally. this time. Uh, we got, like, the vibe going last time. It was a lot easier this time to go yeah. through good people in the chats. For good sure. Chat going on. Um, yeah, hoping to have some more active people next time, too. It was, it was totally. a lot of fun. Yeah, no, we love hearing from you guys. So, if you, I mean, we love popping pinions and bringing up games. Any questions or anything, we'd love to hear from you guys. Um, so, some ways to kind of hit us up, support us on our own projects um, down in the About tab um here on twitch or if you're watching this in the future on youtube um description about tab there's links to taito's music his jill sandwich shop podcast which is all about resident evil my youtube channel i got my twitch channel where i stream my personal stuff taito i'm hoping you're going to be start streaming some st stuff soon yeah Hopefully. yeah i will be now now that i've had like a couple days off i was just trying to catch up on sleep i've been so tired like working before i knew my contract was going to be up so yeah uh, lots of streaming should be coming up soon Sweet. gonna be doing crazy resident evil 4 stuff hopefully trying Sounds to unlock good. everything in that that'd be fun so yeah so there's plenty of ways to check us out help support the stream donations other good things like that um help us out have some fun but yeah so we'll take uh any other things? Um, I guess if you're watching in the future on YouTube, you can subscribe to help us out. That'd be awesome. Um, keep checking back here to uh, see when we're going to stream next. I'm looking forward to the next episode. This has been awesome. I'm stoked. Yeah. Let's keep rocking. Definitely. Make sure you uh, choose to save and quit before you leave. You don't want to lose your progress. So Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to get the cheesy intro outro solid next time. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have to figure something out. So I love it. It's so good. Maybe I'll just throw twenty five cents at my camera every time we're starting. <laughs> that way, <laughs> you know, I'm entering my token. Yeah, there you go. Awesome stuff. <laughs> awesome guys. Well, anything else? Are we feeling? We ready to go? Yeah, that's it, man. Okay, it good awesome. Chat and have a good one. Yes, thank you guys for watching. Really do appreciate it. We'll catch you guys next time on Press Start to Play. <laughs>